Benjamin Zulu Show. It is always pleasure having you on board and we are very much grateful for the overwhelming feedback that you are giving us. Thank you so much. My name is Willy Kinyash and tonight we want to talk about how to heal from perfectly hidden low self-esteem. And you know, self-esteem, it is how we perceive things. And this perfectly hidden low self-esteem, it is very dangerous because from outside, people see you uh, as a good man. You appear to be, to be doing well, but inside you, you are dying. You are rotten because there is no happiness in you. Though outside people can look at you and they can see happiness all over. But it is you only knows how things are going on down deep within your heart. And this is, this is something that should, should transform your life. And the coach is here to take us through this topic. Hmm. Yes, sir. And you know, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> one problem we have here is this. When you are going through issues in life, mm. you can't go always crying. Mm. So the, the necessity to suppress what you feel and deal with the situation mm. is a part of life. Mm -hmm. You can't always say, oh, you guys are hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Some situations don't give you the luxury to cry. Mm. So what you are discussing today is, uh, came from a necessary, very important, mm. critical yeah. survival skill uh -huh. to suppress what you feel and face the situation. And you move on. For example, let's say you grew up in chaotic family or you came from a bed, uh, parental abandonment. What can you do about an absent parent? Mm. Can you just sit there and cry? You just have to study, stretch, move, do, do whatever you have to do. Mm. What we are discussing today is not a deliberate decision, conscious to, to pretend. Mm. We are not discussing pretense today. Mm. We are discussing survival. Mm. The people who live do not give them a chance. To just sit there and say, come and listen to me this time around. <laughs> <laughs> and they are many. <clears throat> many times you are the parent, you are the one giving strength. Mm. You've heard us say that in Africa families, the parent is not always the parent. Sometimes the parent is one of the children. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Sometimes who looks like parent eh? is a children to the child. <laughs> yes. Who should be a child, but now they are the... <laughs> What do you do when you had to adopt your family and carry them over from Egypt to Kenya? As a child. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you have never lived for yourself? Mm -hmm. And if you don't work, they will die. There are people today who went all the way to the Gulf, Middle East, mm -hmm. to hustle for the family, oh. to feed them. Now, <clears throat> this person who is hustling, being called by all people asking for money, from mother to father to whoever, calling and explaining their needs. Mm -hmm. Who is the child here and who is the parent? So parentified, <clears throat> parentified children, as we call them, were thrust into responsibility and burdens mm -hmm. of others mm -hmm. too early. And they were not given an option. Mm -hmm. So could they sit there and say, guys, I'm not so stressed. Comfort me today. <laughs> mm -hmm. The people who, who are depending on you don't give you a chance to meet your needs. Today we are discussing a situation where we have children who are never children. Mm -hmm. You know some people grew up without being children? Mm -hmm. You know that is possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people, <laughs> they were thrust into adulthood and responsibility and burdens and stress and problem solving from early on. A class three child is cooking for the family, bringing back the cows, getting the firewood, organizing the other, washing these ones, putting them in the bed, organizing them for work, taking them. Class three. Is that a child? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get it? Yeah. Some people mm -hmm. do not have the luxury to be children. Mm -hmm. 
and they were burdened early. So, when we talk about loss of esteem, do not come here thinking we are talking about pretenders who are acting like they are happy mm. while inside they are struggling. Why are they pretending? Mm. Mm -hmm. Real life does not allow a lot of pretense, by the way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, true. When you grow up, when you mature, you forget about your image. Just, doctor, this is what is paining. Do whatever you need to do. Okay. I, need, I need health to <laughs> yes. go to work. Yeah. Mature people have no space for pretense. It's too tiresome. Mm. Why are you faking an image? Mm. Too much work. Mm. Only fake people have time to pretend. Mm. Mature people don't have time to pretend. Yeah. No. No, they just have to deal with it. If something is painful, it is painful. Deal with it so that it gets strength mm -hmm. to go to the real issues. Yes. I need to work and earn and build something. I need to, to attend to life. Mm. <laughs> mm. Real people have no time for pretense. Too much work. Mm. <laughs> if they don't like something, they don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> they just say, sorry, I don't have time for that. Mm. <laughs> you know? So, pretense only works for fake, empty people. Solid, concrete, mature people are aligned. Mm. The law number one is that depression sometimes comes from disalignment. Wow. Not fakeness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, the kind of people who have the presence of mind to watch these kind of shows are not pretenders. Mm. 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 Our shows are not very palatable mm. for pretenders. Yeah. They are too peppery. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of people who are looking, sitting around their seekers. They want to tell me the truth. However it is, I'll deal with it. Mm. This is be they are better the truth I be done with it yes. <laughs> than all this confusion of lies. Of mm. no, no, we are not, uh, doctor, what is it? Tell me what, it, what can we do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if I can't afford it now, can I organize myself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and the first rule is you could be, okay, loss of esteem has many feelings and I'm picking the first feeling, depressed inside. Mm. Some people feel depressed inside, inside, hopeless inside, helpless inside, incompetent inside, unworthy inside, not up to the task inside, mm. collapsing inside, inside, fearful inside, but outside again, where they are coming from, they were not given the luxury to be the center of attention. Mm. They were senders of money, <laughs> not center of attention. Mm. <laughs> they gave attention. They did not receive attention. Mm. And that was their modus operandi. I have talked to ladies who have shipped their entire families. She hustled for the green card. Then when she reached there, she shipped everybody to make sure at least they are off her back and they can stand on their own. Mm -hmm. Now she's breathing the first time at that age. Okay, so guys, where are we? Yes. <laughs> she has been rescuing, rescuing, going, fetching this one, fetching this one. By the time she's done rescuing, okay, so what is the time? Oh, no. <laughs> By that time, some problems have first had, and you did not have time to listen to them. Mm. When you're fighting a bear, you can't remember you were pimple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you wrestle the bear first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. The first awareness that you have perfectly covered low self-esteem and identity issues is when you are silently depressed, silently fearful, silently doubtful, inside scared, inside anxious. You have two things. You started out in life having to suck it up. Swallow what you feel and face the situation unless we collapse all of us. Mm. Really, there are people, if they tried to be human, they will not be here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if they tried to actually be real, mm -hmm. we will not be here. Mm -hmm. Some people had the luxury of saying, no, I was just pretending. Some of us, it was not pretending. It was life and death. Mm -hmm. We were running from death and we had to carry everybody out. Mm -hmm. If the house is burning, I can't just start saying, oh, I have a mild headache. Let me rest first. <laughs> the house is burning. <laughs> yes. Get people out. Now you can start examining what scars do I have? Oh, my God. But the unfortunate thing, really, some people are not aware of how wellness feels. Mm. Mm. 
There are no more has always been kujikaza. Be, yeah. be tough, be stiff. Just hold it up. You make it. There are people who their modest, the way to live on earth mm. was to be tough. Mm. Don't keep talking about your problems. Everybody has problems. Just manage. By 40s or sometimes, depending on how early they came in, after 20 years of that kind of life, they start now suffering nervous breakdown. Not everybody having nervous breakdowns. Not everybody having psychotic episodes. Hmm? Mm. Not everybody collapsing into a bottle of whiskey. You know, people collapse into a lot of things. Mm. Not everybody suffering migraines is dramatic. These are rescuers, my brother. Mm. And they don't know another way of living. Mm. They just have to hold it up and occupy the, handle the situation. So the first problem is the curse of pioneers. <laughs> what I like calling the curse of pioneers. The first one to respond to the disaster will experience the greatest bruises. And many times they end up being the sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. Everything about their life is delayed because they put the other people first. And you can't tell them, love yourself first. The situation had no options. Mm -hmm. The situation had no options. Not only did they have nobody to take care of them, they had to look for the green card, the job, trek, beg, explain, apply, research, overwork, take two jobs, three jobs. Nobody to encourage them. Coming home to collapse like a log. <gasps> Before they realize they have not even undressed and it is morning. Now they have to send people money to eat. They have to send people to support other people while supporting themselves. While finding their way. And they did that way for 20 years. Until the idea is planted in them. They were merely an accessory for other people to find life. Mm. That their only purpose in life was to rescue other people. So you're not living your life. With time, they develop that internal meaninglessness. What was all this about? However strong you are, you can only withstand pain for so long. However strong you are, you can only withstand even the strongest bridges. They can only hold weight, this amount of weight, mm. for this long. They always have capacity limitations. Everybody has capacity limitations. Nobody is all powerful. Mm. You may be long suffering, but you're not forever suffering. After some time of enduring this kind of weight, you start collapsing. So the first sign that you're collapsing after a lot of endurance is feeling depressed inside. And you have no particular Thing. You know, society only responds to dramatic events. What happened recently in the last one month? In the last two months, did you lose something? Did anything happen? To you? Uh -huh. For these people, it's not anything dramatic. Mm. There may be a trigger here and there, but the trigger looks trivial. Mm. That was too small. Mm. Just a person quarreling you. Just somebody being angry at you. That was too small. Just a delayed salary. Mm -hmm. That's only the last straw that broke the camel's back. It was not broken by the straw. It was broken by many years, many years mm -hmm. of pressure. The first way to overcome your perfectly covered survival tactic of suppressing your own feelings and needs is to admit it. Mm. And give it context mm -hmm. so that you stop feeling like you're weak. Why are you collapsing and everything is okay? You have a job. You have a family, you should be happy. You have a car. If everybody had, had what you have, they'll be happy. You know, you're better than most people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes give your suffering context. And people may not understand the history you're talking about. Mm. Did I tell you that in most families, the firstborn experiences a very different family than the rest of the children? Mm -hmm. They came up when, when there were no resources. Mm -hmm. When parents were also trying to do guesswork. <laughs> yeah. They were trying to find themselves. Yeah. And many times you participated in trying to help them find the way. Mm -hmm. 
and you, you, you experience a home that was scarce and bare in survival. Uh -huh. These other spoiled brats are coming when there's fridge <laughs> and yogurt <laughs> and TV. Microwave. Uh, uh, <laughs> they're very entitled. Uh, Who took my yogurt? <laughs> now, this one was... <laughs> now they're fighting over yogurt. <laughs> For you to find a meal was a miracle. Yes. To find the meal in the evening, mm. we are happy there's a meal. Thank you, mm. God. Yes. These kids are fighting for <laughs> yogurt <laughs> and sausages. <laughs> and you look at them and you're wondering, are we from the same family? <laughs> <laughs> the seasons firstborns experience and the seasons the other children experience, sometimes the firstborn and the lastborn went through very different parents. Mm. Very different seasons, mm. very different facilities, mm. very different environments. They are siblings, but they share nothing. <laughs> they share only surname <laughs> and <then> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at them, they are so privileged and the way they feel comfortable. Mm. No, I, I said I don't have the banana yoga. I said I, I no, me, I like this. <laughs> Strawberry. <laughs> 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 which which t TV show <laughs> was this one to watch? And then they took the remote. <sighs> and you can't even adjudicate the case. Mm -hmm. You're listening to them, the case, and both of you are spoiled brats. Can <laughs> you get out of here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. And sometimes when you are the rescuer, at some point you run out of rescue. Mm -hmm. And you need rescue. Mm -hmm. An incident happened when somebody got lost in the forest in the way in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the US and they were trying to look for the person. A group went camping, somebody veered off, got lost. Mm. They had the person's number, they were trying to call them, and the person was not picking. When they fi finally found the found the person, asked, Why were you not picking? They said, I don't pick new numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Do you know that is a problem with rescuers? Uh -huh. They don't know how to be rescued. Uh -huh. They don't receive new numbers. Wow. So we are trying to rescue you. <laughs> and you simply don't receive oh, no. new helpers uh -huh. and familiar uh -huh. helpers. Uh -huh. The help should come from somebody I already have in my contact list. Mm -hmm. Many people are collapsing because they're not used to new helpers. Mm. They won't receive. Mm. They, they don't. And they are lost. Their life is a threat. We only have a few hours to rescue you before wild animals. Uh -huh. I want to ask them to learn to receive new numbers. Please. New help. Yes. <laughs> to at least them learn the art of being rescued. Mm -hmm. And even if you, you are in that tilting, rotating chair of the CEO, and every time you stare through the window and you feel numb, mm. sometimes depression feels like numbness. You feel nothing. That's what they call I feel nothing. Mm. Numbness. There's somebody who has been given a big job by government, and I, I find them to have a lot of promise and hope but they have made mistakes that are disturbing their life. And I looked at them and thought about them because I admire them. The <coughs> person is very gifted. But you can see the human mistakes they have made and now they are dragging them back. Mm -hmm. And I looked at them and said, how many of us? This one is visible because they are public. Mm. But how many of us in this are corporate in our jobs? Yeah. We have so much promise, except the mess in our personal lives, the relationships that were burdensome the duties that sucked the life out of us. Some people have sucked the life. Right now they are suffering for the energy they have given, given, given till they run out of, li out of life. How to heal? The first thing is admit it and give it a narrative. Even if you don't have the narrative, come to us. Mm -hmm. Because we have dealt with so many cases of invisible depression. Mm -hmm. We can detect it for you. Yeah. We have scanners mm. for why are you collapsing, although mm. you look like you're doing okay. Mm. Sometimes you're collapsing because of a problem that happened back then. Mm. Back then. Some of the thing that is making you collapse is not visible now. You look like you should be okay now. 
but you were on that drive overdrive mode so long. Many people get married in the same energy. They continue carrying everyone, putting themselves last. There are people who to set up apart one hour, the mandatory one hour we said when you are healthy, you have an hour for yourself that is not shared by job, family, responsibilities, just you, to replenish you, mm -hmm. to teach you, educate you, expose you, think about you, focus on you. Should be an hour every day, at least five days a week. Be time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you will have something to give to the world. If you don't, you will run out of what you are giving. Mm -hmm. The petrol station that gives you fuel also needs to be fueled. Yeah. Every now and then you find the tankers, they are fueling it. Mm -hmm. Who fuels you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many people <laughs> have pumps. How much do you want? 2,000. And you? 1,000. And you? Five minutes. And you? So you, you are dispensing mm -hmm. in measures. Mm -hmm. Who is? Who is fueling you? <laughs> That's a challenge right there. Because you are a giver. Mm -hmm. And all your communications are about takers. Give, takers. Give, give, I need give. this. I need the other. I need From your parents. To, you are now a parent to everybody. Mm -hmm. If you don't get replenished, you get depleted. You could be suffering depletion now. Admit it. Number two, how to deal with mm -hmm. perfectly <coughs> hidden. Sometimes you hide your low self-esteem, your internal emotional struggle, because nobody can understand it. Sometimes you are aware you need <laughs> to be supported. But by who? You're surrounded by people who feed on you, and nobody feeds you. And it's not because they're willing. Some are just incapable. Some, some may be willing, but they can't handle you. They can't handle your degree of challenge. And did you know that your marriage is a world by itself and the only person in that world is your partner? Mm -hmm. You and your partner mm -hmm. comprise a world. There's a kind of energy and communication that is supposed to be happening between you and your partner. There's a kind of support and openness. And if they can't hear you on many issues, you remain unheard for very long. Mm -hmm. When there's a tension between you and your, and your partner, there are things, support, understanding, consulting, empathy, feedback, and understand. There are some encouragements that you can only receive from your partner. They are too vulnerable and they are too intimate. Mm -hmm. They concern issues in your life you can't just tell anyone. Mm -hmm. What if you and your partner were not talking for two months? Mm -hmm. Who will replace your partner to hear those things? Because some of them are not planned. They are every day in the evening. Yeah. Every day we talk on phone at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Who will hear that? You will collapse when you can't talk out to your partner, your emotional energy for a month, for two months. Now you collapse acting okay because you can't tell people that you are not talking. Will anybody who has the capacity to silence, treat you, disappear on you for whatever reason for days? They don't deserve that space because marriage, intimacy, having love relationship is a world that has only two people, you and them. When they keep quiet on you, that world itself is quiet on you. There are things right now you are considering and the only person you can tell is your wife. <laughs> There are things that are disturbing you. The only person who can hear you out is my wife. There's some validations you want to hear as you think a certain direction. The only person you can open up to my wife. There are some delicate yet very high potential ideas. High risk, high potential, delicate. Mm. The only person you can discuss freely is my wife. You discuss with the other guy, he will take the idea. You discuss the other one, you will not understand it. Mm. That does not believe in you. Mm. You are crazy. You need prayers. <laughs> I even need prayers. <laughs> Let's remember, Brother Willie, uh, the way he's talking. <laughs> you need someone to work with him closely. <laughs> I can imagine he's talking about buying five buses, worth 40 million. What is this guy eating? <laughs> Hello. But your wife, like the wife of Ford, mm. and you are saying, 
Yeah. Believe you can actually invent a car that is not pulled by horses. Yes. And it's not ghosts. Mm -hmm. Because I thought if it is not horse, eh, then it's a ghost. <laughs> what is pulling it? Tell eh, us. What eh, are you thinking? Eh, eh. <laughs> no, it will pull. I mean, it will generate some power inside. Eh. <laughs> Listen to my brother. Sometimes the person you marry can abandon you to depression, to loss of esteem, to struggle, to emotional loneliness in the open world. You can't tell everybody you have not been talking for a week. Mm -hmm. People can withdraw emotionally and you're left there. To whom then do you float? And yet you instituted them in that space for emotional support. The solution is to examine whether your relationship is worth it. Mm -hmm. Whether you, what you are calling your union is worth it. Mm -hmm. If the person comes there as an imposter, mm -hmm. not as an encourager, a true companion to hold you up, they sit in the space like a virus. You know, a virus will install itself like a program. Mm -hmm. But make sure it does not perf perform. Mm -hmm. So they install in their life, themselves in your life, in the position of your wife, they make sure you have no wife. Mm. <laughs> you get the diabolical mix. Mm -hmm. They could have stayed out of your life for you to marry a person who is willing. Mm. But no, they come in and they make sure you're deprived of what a wife is supposed to give you. Mm. So you collapse while you're still married. Mm. The world says you're married, mm -hmm. but are you married? Yes, you are married, but are you married? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are married, but you are single. <laughs> you are suffering. You are not even single. If you are single, you would be sick. Yeah. You are not single. You you confused there. La, that, that many people are collapsing because they have a partner with a counterfeit. Is this what they call... They call it situationship or complications. Of yes. It's complicated. Complicated. Relationship. These people, sometimes you have even instituted them as formal now you are supposed to be doing life. Many have abandoned, they are taking the energy to elsewhere. The last thing I want you to do, how to heal, is to seek the balm of Gilead. In Jeremiah 8 says, is there no balm in Gilead? Are there no physicians there? Why then is the wound of the daughter of my people not cured. God is aware you were wounded because of the battles. But why is it taking so long for you to cure, to be cured? There are people who they know something is wrong. They know they need help, but their ego. Mm -hmm. And I told you women also have egos, very big ones. Mm -hmm. Ego is just your sense of pride. Our ego keeps us from submitting for the surgery. You postpone your healing. You postpone your arrival. When they reached Gilgal, he post the caravan for Joshua to circumcise the boys because their fathers had died in rebellion. Some of us were never initiated to manhood because those who were supposed to <coughs> initiate us to adulthood, to function, died in their own rebellions. Mm. There are some people who left you unfathered, unmothered, unmentored, confused. And you are aware of it. You are aware of it. Mm -hmm. Privately, but you're not circumcised. Mm -hmm. It's private, but it's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've not been incited to self-confidence. Somebody left you. Somebody abandoned you. And you're aware of it, and you keep postponing it, thinking you're managing it. If you, do, if you keep postponing your healing, you postpone your arrival. Before they enter the promised land, the caravan was stopped in Gilgal. Gilgal means rolling away. There are some things you have to roll away to come to the essence of your existence, to deliver on your deepest capabilities. You need to have healed the wounds, even if they are deep and hidden. Finally, remember this. Self-esteem contains a paradox in that it is too personal to be seen, but too evident to be hidden. Mm. <laughs> you continue putting a face. Yeah, I am the CEO, I am the HR in charge of, uh, and today we are. Pre mm -hmm. Your job presents you to look powerful and put together. 
But inside you feel empty and small and unworthy and unlovable. And you know that is a problem that you should deal with. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere and undress and get injected in surgery. But you say, I'll handle it. With the time it will become too evident that you are conflicting. You run to alcohol, you drink till you drop. Some people are trying to silence that bottle inside. They're using the bottle to replace it with medicine. You know, medicines they put in bottles, alcohol they put in bottles, bother bottles. <laughs> so instead of this bottle, I'll do this one. <laughs> <laughs> so some people are holding their own bottle. They should be holding a bottle, really. Yes. Many people you see holding bottles, yes. actually they need a bottle. Mm -hmm. Only another kind of bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. they know they need something. Mm. But that one is uncomfortable. Mm. Rather this one, yeah. <laughs> you know. Mm. But this is only anesthesia. Sometimes mm. people are drinking for anesthesia to silence the pain for an, a, a short while. Oh. <laughs> what they should do surgery, they are doing anesthesia. Remember, if you continue postponing your healing, mm. you continue postponing your arrival. In summary, you have said, give your depression, your low self-esteem, your self-doubt, your numbness, your hopelessness, your confusion. You are freezing your coldness. Your amnesia, your lack of sleep, your drunkenness, you are collapsing to many men, many women. Give it context. How long you have had to carry others? And now you are not told to receive new numbers, to receive help. Mm. If th this, the second thing, if you realize that where you, you have come as far as you, you could have come by holding yourself by force, and this depletion is a ripple effect, of somebody who did not inaugurate you. It is not really you. It is people who left you because of their own rebellions and their own conflicted lifestyle and because their own pathology. They left work hanging and you're suffering for it. If you conceptualize it that way, you suddenly re release the shame. Mm -hmm. And lastly, sometimes it's a small thing. Something is marriage with an eclectic on and off partner who knows how to disappear on you and to leave you collapsing with your needs although they occupy in the space of your partner you can't institute any another acting partner to hear you out support you and so they occupy the place when they're not playing the role so they leave you mm -hmm. hanging and collapsing remember sometimes it is not you it is the person you have allowed to occupy the place of your emotional backup who is instead becoming an emotional blackmail yes wow. thank you so much we appreciate it and we are here to tell you that you can overcome that issue the first thing you need to do accept i have a problem and then after that you need to look at what is this that is that is making me to die inside maybe it is anger bitterness even language barrier maybe you invited somewhere and you can't speak good English and you and that is making you to feel like I I can't go I can't go there. You need to deal with all these things and become that version that God intended you to be when He created you. So thank you so much for joining me. My name is Willie Kinyash and see you on the next